My name is Vance Friedenberg, and I'm here at the Museum of Vertebrate Zoology in Berkeley, California. And I'm going to show you how to collect the skin swab from a museum specimen. This is a very special specimen. It's called Rana Sierra, which is our mountain, or Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog that lives here in the mountains in California. Now, I have to be very careful with this because this is actually the specimen that describes the species. So it's called the type specimen. Here's the original tag from the frog, collected June 26, 1912, at Kearsarge Pass, California, 10,500 feet. And the first thing I want to do is rinse it to make sure that there's no, nothing just stuck on there that isn't part of him that could give us a false positive. So I'll rinse it off with ethanol. And notice I'm spraying pretty hard to try to rinse it as best I can. Okay, now I'm ready to collect the skin swab. So here's my swab. I open up the package, pull out my swab, bring my frog back up, and just as with other specimens, we're going to swab the ventral side of the animal, not the dorsal side, and we're going to do about 30 strokes. And notice I'm bending the swab a little bit and twirling it. Now these are techniques that allow me to know that I'm getting enough friction and covering space to collect skin tissue. Now I could, it's okay to, to continually rub across the whole animal, um, but that's, those are the most likely places where we're going to find the infection. And then I'm finally, I'm also going to go do a little bit in the webbing of the back feet. The other thing to notice is, see the little hairs on the swab are actually pulled out? That's actually good. That means I've been getting a little bit of friction on the animal. And if you look at the animal, it still looks perfectly fine. I haven't ripped the skin or anything. These specimens are priceless. I'm going to be very careful and put it down. Now you notice, hopefully, that I covered it up so it doesn't dry out. Okay, so we're looking to see whether any of these animals that were collected years ago may have been infected with a fungal pathogen. We can now extract the DNA from that and see if our pathogen is actually on this animal. I've got a jar of animals here. These are specimens, salamanders, from the family Salamandridae that were collected in Turkey. Now what we're doing is we're going to search to see whether these animals are infected with a fungal pathogen. In order to do that, we're going to take one of the animals out and swab the skin with a swab. You might be wondering, if we get a positive, how do we know it's the animal that I swabbed or if it's some of these other animals cross-contaminating it? And that is perfectly reasonable to ask that question. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, we take our animal out, and the very first thing we do is we spray the animal down with ethanol, which is the same liquid that's in the jar that they are housed in. And the idea here is I'm trying to, if there's any pieces of skin that have floated off another animal, I want them to be washed off of this animal. The second thing we do is we change gloves between each animal. Okay, now I'm ready to collect the swab. So I've got my swab right here. I open that up, take out my swab. So these are synthetic swabs that are used on these museum specimens. Now, these museum specimens are priceless. They're here for as long as we can keep them in the museum. So we want to be really gentle with them and we want to be really quick because we don't want them to dry out. I'm going to start swabbing the animal. Now with these swabs, what we're going to do is do about 30 strokes on the animal and we want to do it mostly on the ventral surface, the bottom part of the animal as opposed to the dorsal side. So we're on the ventral side and I'm going to do 30 strokes. Notice you can almost hear it. So you can hear me scraping the skin a little bit. And what that does is there are little tiny pieces of skin that are coming off and getting stuck on my swab. Now it kind of feels a little bit like sandpaper on there, which is good. That means I'm getting some friction. And I want to be especially careful. I'm not going to swab the tail because I don't want it to break off. You don't want to do it too hard. You don't want to actually, you do not want to break the skin of the specimen. You want to be gentle with it, but you want to be vigorous enough where you get little pieces of tissue coming off. Okay, now I'm going to do the last few on the toes because we know that's an area where the chytrid fungus tends to be more commonly growing, even at low concentrations. 
All right, that's about 30 strokes, maybe a few more. Now I'm done with this guy, I'm gonna put him down. And one of the things I wanna do is keep this from touching anything else, but I also wanna cover my specimen with a moist towel so that it doesn't dry out while I'm doing this, okay? It's very important. Next, I break off my little swab and I'm gonna put it in my vial right here. Now we're ready to extract DNA from that and see if it's infected. Now you want to have a vial that has some sort of locking lid because when you do the extractions you have to heat up the lid, the, the vial itself and you don't want the lid popping off so that's also very important.